more time. We got to go, Dante. Clap your hands if you know it's going to be God. I'm telling y'all, while we're standing here worshiping, God is working on stuff. something good. Make them look you in the eye. Tell them something God. No, you got to use your preacher voice. Look at them again and say something God. Something good is about to happen. Something God is about to take place. Something good is about to happen. Something God is about to take place. Something good is about to happen. You say it. Something God. Is about to take place. Something is about to happen. You can't have it if you won't say it. Say it's about to take place. Listen, something is about to happen. Something is about to take place. Something It's gonna be God. Tell somebody it's gonna be good. It's gonna be God. Hey, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be God. Something good, something good.
Good morning, dreamers. It's Rock Nation Sunday. time worshiping with us will you raise your hand well dreamers let's make our first time friends feel at home as a matter of fact let's pass the peace everyone get out your rows and go give someone a hug let them know how glad you are to see them family while you are passing the peace if you have a heart for children or if you want to pour into the next generation of kingdom leaders, today is your day to get connected to Rot Nation. Make sure you take out your phone, scan the QR code, and you can get connected to Rot Nation today. Hey, we're only asking you to serve one Sunday, one service, once a month. One Sunday, one service, once a month. Get plugged into Rot Nation today. Now, as you can see, we have threw it back to the 80s. We got any 80 babies in here? Any 80 babies? Okay, it's time for a little roll call to see who we got in here. All right, so if you was born or graduated in 1980, make some noise. All right, what about 81? 82? Okay, 83, 84, we got some 85s, 86, okay, 86, representing 87, 88, 88, 89, okay, so we got some 80s babies in here. Hey, y'all looking good, you seasoned saints, y'all look blessed. <laughs> But Zaria, what is the only thing left for us to do? Well, there's only one thing left for us to do. Get into your designated space where you meet God because the weekend worship experience starts, starts now. Family, it's Rock Nation Sunday. Y'all make some noise. All right, we're going to take this time to highlight our Rock Nation academic recognition. All right, so first we have Naya Curtin. Y'all make some noise for Naya. Journey Harris. King Harris. Lila Mack. Breland Middleton. And last but certainly not least, Sabria Prevo. Y'all make some noise for our babies. Rapping to the beat And me, the groove, and my friend 
hands together, together try to move your feet. feet. See, I am Wonder Mike, and I like to say hello. To the black, to the white, the red, and the brown, the purple, and yellow. But first, I got a bang, bang, a boogie to the boogie. Say, up, jump the boogie to the bang, bang, boogie, let's rock. You don't stop, rock the rhythm, and I'll make your body rock. Well, so far, you've heard my voice, and I brought two friends along. And next on the mic is my man, Hank. Come on, Hank, sing that song. Check it out, I'm the C A S N, the O V A, and the rest is F L Y. You see, I go by the code of the doctor of the mix. These reasons, I'll tell you why. Come on, dreamers, give it up for Kyle. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Y'all know y'all couldn't even rap that song. Let's say amen for our babies. Oh, dreamers, we about to take y'all back to the 1980s. It's time for your favorite game show. Name that tune. And today, we got Rock Nation versus DR Staff. Come on out here, Skeeter. We gonna play a best of three. Hands by your side. You know the rules. Stand right here, Skeeter. And when you know that tune, hit the buzzer, and we gonna name that tune. Vaughn. Clap your hands, everybody, if you got what it takes. I'm All right, Janera, what's that song? Name that tune. I don't know. Skeeter, name that tune. Can you play it again? Play it again. Can't play it again? Oh, dang. Oh. All right, hands by your side. Vaughn, we going to the next one. Let's go to round two. Vaughn. Name that tune, Janera. Oh, my God. Oh. Skeeter, you got it. Work it. That's not correct. Skeeter, name that too. I got, she beat me with that one. All right, hands by your side. This is round three, come on. Round three, Vaughn, give us something. Janera, name that too. I literally don't know. Name that too, Skeeter. Dang, I feel like I know. It has to be the name or the artist? The song name. All This Love. Not it. Hey, they got none. Let's give it up for these two contestants. Hold up. Randy, come on out here for Rock Nation. Chief Hines, come on up here and represent DR staff. You need a lifeline. Chief said he needs a lifeline. All right, hands by your side. Chief, hands by your side. Vaughn. I ain't no joke. I used to let the mic smoke. Now I slam it when I'm gonna make sure it's broke. When I'm gone, no one gets on. Cause I won't let nobody press up and mess up the scene I set. I like to stand in the crowd and watch the people wonder, damn. All right. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Hands by your side. Vaughn, take us home. What's the song? At night. Chief, what's the song? The Purge. Uh, all right. I, I, one more. Hands by your side. Vaughn, give us something churchy. What's that song? Name that too. When the battle is over. Hey! Let's give it up for the DR staff. I got you. Let's give it up for the name that too. All right, family. Good morning, dreamers. Hello, we are going dreamers. to transition into our moment of intercessory prayer. So if I could just get everyone on your feet, if you're in our online sanctuary, be sure to drop your prayer request in the chat. Today we have Marvin with us, one of our amazing Rock Nation leaders who's going to lead us in prayer today. Marvin, what is our focus scripture today? Uh, our focus scripture today is Philippians 4, chapter, oh, chapter 4, verse 19. And my God will fully satisfy every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. What, what is our topic for today? 
next level better. Take it away, Marvin. Father, I pray today for changing us, for working on us, for making your light on us, and for making us want to be better. So today, we speak to our own spirits, decree our own lives, and we command our souls to arise. Shine for your light has to come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. We are getting better. We are getting up today. I declare, we are getting up today. We are going to our next level today, spiritually, relationally, financially, and emotionally. We declare today that our finances and our health will finally match our faith in, in Christ Jesus. We declare our souls are prospering. Therefore, our bodies and our finances must follow suit up with our spirit in Jesus' name. Today is already a great day for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Now I need some people who are ready to arise and are ready to get up to send a praise up because we know that when we're ready to get up and when we're ready to send a praise up, blessings come down. So I need you to make some noise to our Father. When we send a praise up, blessings come down. Battles are won. Chains are broken. Walls come crumbling down. The attacks of the enemies are confused in Jesus' name. And so God, we say thank you. We say thank we say thank you for doing it that's next level better. We say thank you, God, for arising our spirits today, God. Thank you, God, for bringing our money and our finances to where our spirits are going to be in Jesus' name. We say thank you in advance for the doors you are going to open. We say thank you in advance for the ways you're going to make. We say thank you in advance for the healing in our body. We say thank woke up with a thank you God in your spirit anybody woke up with a thank you God in your spirit the Bible says that we go from glory to glory day by day and so we wake up this morning saying thank you God for next level thank you that we will be better today than we was yesterday and we will be better tomorrow than we was today amen amen well y'all it's giving time if you're joining us for the first time today, the reason why we get excited, the reason why we celebrate when it's time to give is because we believe that we don't just have to give, but we get to give. Amen. All right. And y'all know it's Rock Nation Sunday, so I got my little sister Sabria up here with me. Let's give it up for Sabria, our honor roll student. And so our given scripture for this month has came from 2 Corinthians 9, verses 10 through 11. And it reads, now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase the store of your seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way. Somebody say every way. And on every occasion, somebody say every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. And I love this scripture because it reminds us that God gives seed to the sower. What does that mean? That means that when we make a decision in our heart, when we purpose in our heart that we want to give, that God will provide us with exactly what we need to be able to do so. What's your favorite part, Sabria? The best part about living a obedient and generous life is God says that we will believe in every way, like in school, at home, and much more. Come on! This baby said we'll believe and we'll be blessed in every way and so that means that not just financially but in every aspect of our life. Amen? And so we're gonna make this practical for y'all real quick. It's Rock Nation Sunday so we got a little illustration. And so we give on three different levels. The first level that we live is our tithe. That's 10% of our increase. Then we give a free will offering. That's the amount that we give beyond our tithe, right, Sabria? And then we sow a love offering. That's the amount that we sow directly into our pastors, knowing that according to Philippians 4.19, God will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Amen? All right, so Sabria, have you purposed in your heart that you want to give? Yes. Okay. You got any cash? No. You don't got no cash? No worries. I got you, boo. It's your day. I got you. I got $10 for you right here. 
right here. So I'm gonna put it in your hand. And so we Thank just you. learned the principle. So we said 10% of our increase is our tithe. So that's your increase right there. So how much would you give of your tithe? For your tithe? One dollar. Come on! On a row, period, 10%. So here goes your tithe right here because we're giving a dime of, for every dollar or a dollar for every $10, right? Yes. And so here goes our tithe. And so if you wanted to give a free will offering, how much would you give then? One dollar. You gonna give another dollar, okay, so two dollars. And then if you wanted to sow your love offer into Bishop or Pastor D, so one of them, who would you sow, what would you give? One dollar. You gonna give another dollar, okay, so you have sown three dollars. How many dollars do you still have, Sabria? Seven. Seven dollars, that's just for you. And that's the beauty about God. She started off with nothing, but at the moment that she purposed in her heart that she wanted to give, God used me as a vessel to get to her exactly what she needed. And even after she gave, she still ended up with seven dollars. That's just for her. Is there anybody that believes that we serve a God that will provide exactly what we need and still leave us with more than what we started with? Amen. And so if you believe that, I want to encourage you. It doesn't matter how old you are. You can be just like Sabria. You can obey God at a young age. And I believe that as you obey God on this level at this age, he's going to speed some things up for you. Amen. And so we're going to get ready to give, y'all. We make giving super, super easy. We have four giving options for your convenience. You can find those on the screen. We got a new way. You can text any amount to 84321 if you're joining us in the building or in our online sanctuary. If you're in the room, we got an easy way for you. Look in the back of your pew. Look at the back of the pew, turn around or look in front of you. There's a pew, you can go ahead and scan the QR code and it'll take you straight to our ways to give. Okay, y'all ready? All right, so we say a seed confession together because we believe that when we declare the word of God over our seed, it won't come back to us void. So let's say it together. You ready, Sabria? Yes. All right, let's do it, y'all. We, we are the Dream Center, Center Church, Church of Atlanta, Atlanta a, a praying church, church, a worshiping church, a generous church, called to change the world expectation of the church. We believe in the vision. We believe in the visionary. And we believe that both are good ground. Let's say it together, y'all. So we, we bring a tithe, we give, give a free will offering, and we sow a love offering because we believe. We believe that in response to our obedience concerning our finances, the favor of God is exploding over our lives. We believe God is raising up somebody, somewhere, who will use their power, their resources, their influence, and their affluence to help us. Because I am a tither, and because I am a giver, I have access to doors. What kind of doors? Doors of opportunity, doors of promotion, doors of increase, doors of overflow. God doors, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. So family, if you're joining us in the building, we want to invite you to the altar to bring your seed now. Even if you're given electronically, you can still tap the altar with your phone because we know there's a grace that lies there. If you're worshiping with us in our online sanctuary, y'all know we didn't forget about you. We want you to tap into this grace as well. Everyone, let's give now. Hey, good morning, dreamers. We're about to go right here. Hey, what's up? I'm blessed. Blessings on blessings on. Hey. Repeat after me, let's say every time I turn around, blessing, blessing, blessings, blessing. Every time I turn around, blessings on blessings, Every time I turn around, blessing, blessing, Every time I turn around, blessings on blessing. You say there will be blessing, blessing, Every time I there will be blessings on blessings. Every time I there will be blessings, blessings. Every time I there will be blessings on blessings. The favor of the Lord rests upon me, and in my hands I have more than enough. Surely goodness and mercy is following me. I know God will supply. Every one of my needs say favor
begin to open up your mouth as we sing of the greatness of our God who knows that he's great he's great and mighty great and mighty to be praised so we lift up your name father we lift you up great are you Lord somebody just lift up the fruit of your lips and begin to lift that up in the room Lord you're great God you're great you're great God you're great God you're a great God
Lord, you've been so good to me. Yes, you have. I said, great are you, Lord. We lift up our praise to you, Lord. We say, great are you, Lord. You put breath in our lungs. You breathe life into us, Lord. Great are you, Lord. When I'm in the hospital bed, Lord, I know you are great cause Lord you're great great are you Lord when I don't know what else to do I know that you're great yes you're great it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out praise it's your breath in our lungs God so we pour out our praise pour out our praise we pour out our praise pour out our praise can y'all just say pour out pour out pour it out pour it out pour it out pour it out come on a little stronger we pour
in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in my lungs. So I pour out my praise to you only. It's your breath in my lungs. So I in my lungs so i pour out my praise to you only yeah sit great are you lord sit great are you lord great are you lord we're gonna make this personal say it's my breath it's your breath in my lungs, sing it out. So we pour out my praise. I pour out my praise. It's your breath in my lungs. So I pour. Yes, I pour. Only it's your breath in my lungs. So I pour out my praise. I pour out my praise. It's your breath in my lungs so i pour out my praise to you only
worship him. He'll make your life a testimony. Come on, sing it again. How great. How great. next to you squeeze them tell them you love them and you're glad to see them let it be a holy squeeze though not a free feel let it be a holy hug and a glory to God come on you know their name if you don't know their name get their name so you know who you're praying for this week look at them and tell them I'm gonna be praying for you all week this week Craylon I got you I'm gonna be praying for you Nicole Thomas did you get their name Tell them I'm going to be praying for you all week this week. Look at them, call their name and tell them I'm going to be praying for you all week this week. You still looking at me. Look at your neighbor and call their government name and tell them I'm going to be praying for you all week this week. Let's thank God for these babies one more time who have led us into the presence of God. We're raising up the next generation of kingdom leaders and we are excited about what God is doing. Really quickly, look, turn your attention to the screen. We're gonna go straight to the text, I'm late, so let's go straight to the text, Matthew chapter 16. Let's read together. And when Jesus arrived in the villages of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, what are people saying about who the Son of Man is? Everybody read. Then they replied, some think he is John the baptizer. Some say some Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. Tap your neighbor, say read. read. He pressed them. 
And how about you? Hold on, tap your neighbor one more time. Say, how about you? What are you saying? When you leave church, what are you saying? I know who you're saying. I know who you're saying God is while you're in worship and your hands are lifted. But when you get back to your house, who are you saying he is? He pressed them. How about you? What do you say? And Simon Peter said, what? You're the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Uh huh. Jesus came back. God bless you, Simon, son of Jonah. You didn't get that out of some books or get that answer out of books or from teachers. My Father in heaven, God himself, let you in on this secret of who I am really am. Look at somebody and tell them God going to let you in on a secret this week. He going to let you in on a secret this week. Some, some of y'all ain't been talking to him, so you ain't excited. But for those of you who've been talking to God, just tell yourself, God, write that down, uh, uh, Latoya, write it down. God going to let me in on a secret this week. Watch it. He says, you are Peter, a rock. Hold on. This the cussing Peter. Everybody who cuss, you the one God want. You the one. You the one. You the one. Everybody with a knife in your pocket, you the one God want. Come on. He says, you are the rock on which I will put together my church. Read this real strong. A church it, so expansive with energy. Go back. A church so expansive. Wait a minute, a church so expansive. Hold on, because some of y'all don't like the fact that we're growing. A church so expansive with energy on which, come on, that not even the will be able to keep it out. I got to stop right there for the sake of time. I want to talk. Wait a minute. I got to read that next line. Put the next line back up. I got to read the next line. Put the next line back up. And that's not all. You will have complete and free access. <laughs> I had to drop that in the room because some of y'all left here Super Sunday with some keys. Look at somebody, tap them and tell them any and every door, you already got the keys. Somebody jump up and holler, I got the keys, keys, keys. I got the keys, keys, keys. I'm starting a series of messages entitled, I Love My Church. Look at somebody say, I love my church, I love my church. But for the sake of today's discussion, I just want to drop this one word in your spirit, and I want you, every day you wake up this week, I want you to say this before you say anything else. Lady C, I want you to write this down in all caps. Jarena, write it down, Charmaine, in all caps. Look at somebody and just say, undefeated. I'm still, I'm still on that. I, I, I love my church. I, I can't speak for you, but there's no other place I'd rather be on a Sunday morning. There's, there, there is no other group of people that I'd rather be doing life with and encountering God with than you. Look at your neighbor, tell them I'm going to be praying for you all week this week, calling your government name before God. I love my church. So much so, I was thinking about it this week. I was ab around a bunch of other church folks and pastors this week. I love this church so much so that I think I can honestly say that I'd still go to this church even if I wasn't the pastor of this church. There's just something special about this Dream Center Church of Atlanta. If you agree with me, jump up and holler, ain't no party like a Dream Center party. Your neighbor knew around here, look at him and tell him why. Because a dream center party don't stop. But more importantly, I love the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I love those whom God has used and those whom the Holy Spirit is still using to build his church. Sidebar, you cannot love the church and hate Peter. 
that, that's just a sidebar. Your neighbor wasn't paying attention. Tap them and tell them you cannot love the church and hate the people that God is using to build the church. I defend his church. Ooh, with this, this personal, I fight for his church. I protect his church and the people that he's using to build this church. Look at your neighbor, tell them, I ride for you. I ride for you. I ride for you. They, they come for you, they're going to have to come for me too. Y'all not talking. Look at somebody, tell them, they come for you, they're going to have to come for me too, Rhonda. I ride for you. I love my church. I, I, I love the people that God is using to build this church. And for the rest of my life, as for me and my house, we will serve the church. This is still God's church. And let me drop a little bit of good news up top here. What he spoke about his church is still true about his church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I, I don't know what, what you're in, what's in opposition, what opposition you've been up against or, or but, but I, what I do want you to do is I want you to choose peace today. Go ahead and say it. Say it right now. Say it right now. I choose peace. I don't choose violence. I choose peace today. Knowing that whatever it is, it cannot prevail. This is still the truth concerning you and your family. No weapon. Your neighbor knew around here. They don't know this. Look at them and tell them no weapon formed against you can prosper. The weapon will form, but don't let that mess with you. The weapon won't work. It will not prevail against you. It might hurt you, but it won't hinder you. It will not achieve mastery over you because you are the church and you remain undefeated. Both you and I, we're, we're, we're today's Peters. I'm, I'm talking to all the cussers in the room. You're, 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 you're the one God wants to use to build his church. The, 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 those of you who you tried to be fake, but it just didn't work for you. You, you, you tried to be churchy, but it just wasn't you. And every now and then you slip up and say something and people be like, I thought you were saved. Oh, don't, don't, don't. I'm, I'm saved, but, but I'm still human. I'm, I'm saved, but, 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 but mess with my family. And mess with, look at somebody say, mess with my family, you might lose an ear. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, and, and I'm talking, watch this. This is what's so crazy about Peter. He was violent in front of Jesus. <laughs> uh, some of y'all act a fool outside the church. Some of y'all act a fool right up in here. Ma matter of fact, you cool until Sunday. That's when the real you come out. Yeah. Look, look at somebody tell them, but you at the right church. You at the right church. We are today's Peters. I know I'm over time. I'm going to cut across the grass here, but we are today's Peters. And it is, listen, you got to listen to me. Tap your neighbor say, I love my church. I love my church. It, it, it is upon the strength of your confession of faith. It is upon the strength of your relationship with the Lord Jesus that God is building out and expanding his church. I, I know that's, that concept is hard for some of you to, 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 to accept, but God is using you to build his church. But Bishop, I don't know enough scripture. That's okay, you know God. You can learn scripture, but you know God. You, who am I preaching to in here? I, Okay, let me ask you this question. I'll know if I got the right word. Sometimes I feel so underqualified to build God's church. But, but what I cannot deny is that God is using me to, to, to cause the church to evolve, to cause the church to keep growing. Watch this. God said, tell you... It is not a traditional church, it's an assertive church. 
Woo! Uh, uh, watch this. A church, not, not like in the 50s and 60s, but this is a church that's not just gathering to give uh, uh, discriminated people a place of power. Come here, Atlanta, because a lot of the major churches in this city grew because black people didn't have anywhere else where they could be somebody. So they flocked to churches because that was the only place that they could have power. Because when they left church, they were still a boy. Uh, look at somebody and tell them we're in a different dispensation now. And God is not just building a church so people can feel needed and, and feel seen and feel heard. No, God's building a church that, that as the translators of the Message Bible said, is expansive with energy. I know that's kind of like a new age word, that whole concept of energy, but uh, I don't know where you are in the room, but you got to watch what and who you give your energy to. You, uh, oh, God. Yeah, look, just look at somebody. I want you to prophesy. Say, give me my good energy back. I, get, I didn't gave my good energy to some of the, to some bad people but but watch this God says I'm, I'm I'm building a church that is expansive with energy watch this a church that is always moving forward always always tap your neighbor say always always why y'all why y'all always doing something because that's the energy over here it's it's expansive I don't know yes I do I'm preaching to every last one of y'all that's why you're uncomfortable around small people that's why you're uncomfortable around people who are content because you like this good, but this ain't it. I need somebody who got more than you ever had to tell the devil this ain't all I'm going to ever have. I, I got more than I ever had, but this ain't all I'm going to ever have. I'm, I'm going to always be moving. Expansive with energy. I love my church. I love my church. He, he says, I'm building a church that's always moving forward, a church that's comprehensive, that, that speaks to your spirit, that speaks to your body, that speaks to your mind, that speaks to your money, that speaks to your marriage, speaks to your relationships. So, some of y'all, tap your neighbor, say, stay put, stay put, stay put. Stay, I'm talk, I, I told you to say that to your neighbor because they're uncomfortable in this church because every time they come to this church, God starts talking to them about the stuff they don't want to talk about. And if the devil were having his way, he'd run you out of here so you can just go somewhere where you feel needed. And seen. He says, no, 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 I'm, I'm not just building a place, Vaughn, where, where you can go from insignificance to being somebody who can tell somebody else what to do. That's not what God is up to. God, God says, I'm building a church that's always moving forward, that's never limited or restricted by anything other than God's word and God's will. God's building his church. Tap your neighbor, tell him God's using you to do it. He's using you. He's you. Talk to him. Get their attention. Call their government name. Call their... Ooh, why your mama named you that? She wasn't right. <laughs> Call that government name. God's using you to build this church. So he leads me back to Matthew chapter 16. I know we're post-resurrection. We're after Easter. We're on our way to Pentecost. But he told me to encourage you to continue to believe in the purpose and the power of the church. All of this stuff going around wants to negate the purpose and the power of the church especially the local church. But God says, you got to continue to believe in the purpose and the power of the local church that he has assigned you to. See, see, we see both the purpose and the power of the... Are y'all still here? Yeah. Oh, see, the, 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 the purpose and the... Y'all got quiet for a minute. I'm like... 
Okay, well, stay with me then. Stay with me. Stay with me. The, 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 watch this. The purpose and the power of the church, the church that God is building, is articulated in the text. Watch it. It's to make the gates of hell ineffective and then to remove the barriers between heaven and earth. Look at somebody say, we understood the assignment. To make the gates of hell ineffective. That's why they were so mad at us, because we kicked the gate in and started swagging and surfing. That's why they were so mad, because we kicked the gate in and walked it out. They okay with letting the devil control culture, but that ain't our assignment. Our assignment is to reclaim culture for the cause of Christ. Here it is, the purpose and the power of the church articulated in the text to, to make the gates of hell ineffective, to remove the barrier, Amandi, Woo. to get rid of everything that stops heaven from showing up in earth. That's your assignment. And God says, God says, I, I, he says, that's your assignment. He says, so that I can do what I want to do in the earth, in you, through the church. God says, I'm going to do it in the earth, in you, through the church. Yeah, don't, don't miss that. He says, I'm going to do it in you. Y'all still slow. Okay, okay. I know you're listening. He says, I'm going to do it in you, through the church. There are some things that can only be done through the church. Can be done through your fraternity. Can be done through your sorority. Can be done through legislation. Can be done through the PTA. The only way that devil is getting out of your daughter's school is if you pray it out. You can't legislate morality. Are y'all, okay, let me, let me, let me go back. Let me go, because I'm, I'm over time. He, he says, God's plan is to use you through his church. I need you to tell your neighbor that. God, write that down for me, please, Charmaine. Tell your neighbor, God's plan. How you talk to your neighbor and looking at me? Ooh, we, if, when I'm talking to you, look at me. Look at me and look at your neighbor at the same time. Come on. Tell them God's plan is to use you through your church. God's plan is to use you. I, I need y'all to say it with me. You got to get this so, so, so that you plug into a passion group, so you plug into a dream team, so you don't come and take and never give. Somebody say, well, I gave an offering. Well, that's for you. Somebody say, I do give. Okay, we had a youth lock-in this weekend. The young people are excited, but where were you? I can feel my staff saying, go back to your computer, Bishop. God's plan is to use you through his church. I got two minutes. But if you're not careful, the, cult, the current cultural climate concerning the church, especially the local church, will cause you to take a passive-aggressive approach to life and to ministry because you don't understand that your life is your ministry. You think your ministry is contagious. No, that's what you do to help facilitate worship. You think your ministry is what you do with groceries on us. No, no, your life. That's why the devil wants to keep messing with your life. That's why the devil wants you spiritually bipolar so you can be the church you on the weekend and the depress you Monday through Saturday. <laughs> Tap your neighbor, say, your life is your ministry. Let's lean in for a moment. I got a minute left. I'm going to take about seven. Let's lean in for a minute to the lesson that's living in today's text. So we leave here today with the understanding 
that the assignment of the church, yes, the local church, through its partners or parishioners, however you want to call them, label it, is to be assertive in all things, my phone is saying stop, in all things life and in all things ministry. Your assignment is to be assertive, not passive aggressive. Well, I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm just going to pray. I'm going to sit back. Yep, yep, you lying. People be like, oh, I'm just, oh, I, I wasn't there, but I was praying. No, you wasn't. Now, he, God said, I don't want you passive aggressive. I want you assertive. I want you to get in where you fit in. This, this is why I love my church, because the Dream Center Church of Atlanta is empowering people to make their dreams become reality. Who, who am I talking to? If I'm, if I'm, when I say this, if I'm talking to you, I want you to jump up and holler, I love my church. Every time you leave here, you leave here feeling like, I can do it. I love my church. We're empowering people to make their dreams become real. We over here making boss moves. <laughs> we over here making boss moves with the big boss. I heard this, no pun intended. Tap your neighbor, say, big things popping, little things. <laughs> we undefeated. That's the remix. Big things popping, little things stopping. We undefeated. Y'all about to miss me. Y'all forgot I used to be a rhymer in my old life. Big things popping. So God, somebody holler, we undefeated. We undefeated. I got to quit. God told me to pull you out of that place of complacency. Out of, he, no, I got to say it the way he told me to write it. He said, pull you up and out of that pit of complacency. Out of that point of discontentment and to pull you up to another level so you don't miss the window of opportunity that God is about to bring before you. We about to build something. Tap your neighbor and say, we about to build something. You ain't lying, you prophesying. Go ahead, we about to build something. Say it, say, I mean, you gotta say it. You gotta say it. Say it again, we about to build something. We about to build something. I'm not just, I'm not just talking about corporately, I'm talking about individually. Some of you before the end of 2025, you will have built the home from the ground up. Some of you, by the, I saw two of y'all jump up. That, that jumped in your spirit. I saw three, three of y'all, y'all jumped up. Uh-huh. God, I see, I, I agree with you. And, and let me, yes, Lord, I'm going to say it because it's in my, my spirit to say it. And, and somebody going to cover your down payment. I don't know if it's a grant or some kind of program or if God just going to give you favor with a devil. But some. Y'all see now, now y'all see how trifling the church is? Because you wasn't standing up, you assumed I wasn't talking to you. And because you assumed I wasn't talking to you, you didn't really praise God because you wasn't really happy for your neighbor. That's that's why people don't come to church, because they they we demonstrate weekly that we don't really care for each other. I want y'all to break that demon out of this church. Somebody build the house from the ground up and somebody else is going to make the down payment. I need everybody to... Somebody holler, we undefeated. We undefeated. We undefeated. That, that is the truth. We undefeated. I, I, every time I typed this, my computer kept trying to, uh, 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 Grammarly kept trying to correct me, Melvin. We are undefeated. Now, I said it, I wrote it how I said it. We undefeated. I need you to say it with all of that smoke. We, un, we undefeated. Problem is, Dina, some of y'all, too many of y'all living like you lost because you think because you lost a battle you lost a war somebody holler we undefeated we undefeated 
Listen to what Maya Angelou said. She said, you may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. You, I must say that again. You Write that down for me, Keisha J. You may encounter many defeats, but you must not Come on, class. You must not be defeated. Well, she goes on to say, in fact, you, it may be necessary to encounter the defeats so you can know who you are. She was in a bag when she wrote that one. She must have just left church. So before we leave here today, I'm just going to give you all the points. I ain't even got time to preach this. Before we leave here today, you got to ask and answer this question. What does my posture, thank you, mama. What does my perspective, what do they need to be if I'm going to live an undefeated life? You got to ask this and you got to answer this for yourself. What does my posture need to be? Here it is, because I ain't got time to preach it. Write this down. You got to leave here undeterred. If you're going to live an undefeated life, your posture, Melvin, has to be undeterred. Undeterred. Go home, look it up. I ain't got time to preach it. You, you, he says, I, I'm just going to read the scripture though. He says, I'm building a church so expansive with energy that not even the gates of hell will be able to keep it out. Okay, see, that, that changes the context that you are familiar with because when you heard the words, the gates of hell will not prevail against it, what you saw in your mind was the gates of hell coming against the church. And God said to me, gates don't move. This, this ain't deep, Pastor Harlan, but I need you to hear this. Gates do not move. So when God says the gates of hell will not prevail, Vaughn, what he's really saying is when you come up against the gate, the thing that keeps you out and tells you, you church, you shouldn't be over there, you a Christian, you shouldn't be doing that. Those gates can't keep you out. I mean, if you feel me, just tap two or three people, tell them we about to run all of this. Cause that, we, we about to run. A posture cannot be passive aggressive sitting around waiting on Jesus. He on the throne, he finished. Look at somebody tell him he finished, he finished. He's on the throne, he's finished. Your, your posture has to be, I'm undeterred. Let me say this, I'm untriggerable. Did I tell y'all I made that word up? I made it up. I made it up, and I'm going to have them put it on a T-shirt and copyright it so can't nobody else use it without paying me. Y'all better do it right now because somebody else going to try to do it. Anaya, one of y'all. I'm going to have it on a shirt next week. It's going to say untriggerable. I'm undeterred. Let me, let me break it down for you again. Never scared. If you're going to live an undefeated life, you got to leave here today saying, never scared. I, I respect the gravity of the situation, but I ain't scared. I'm out of time. Look at somebody say, not intimidated. He says, your posture has to be undeterred, Vaughn, but your perspective has to be, and I'm closing for real, play something so I'll close. Play me something that sounds like a win. Play me something that sounds like a victory. Play me something that sounds undefeated. We started singing this a few years ago. Whoa, oh, 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 I still win. Y'all remember that? 
I got to go. My posture is undeterred. Everybody's standing. I got to let you out of here. Did y'all get blessed today? Yeah. Bump your neighbor, say, we undefeated. We undefeated. Do me a favor, don't look at them and tell them, I better see you in this same spot next week. Look at them again, say, I ain't playing with you. Don't run up in here late three weeks from now talking about this my seat. You wasn't here. Our church is, is expanding. My posture is undeterred. I, I got this, this how you got to leave here. I know you up against some stuff. I know it. I'm not making light of it. I respect the weight of what you're dealing with. I'm not making light of it, but you got to leave here knowing you undefeated. The gates of hell. Oh my goodness. You know what I just heard the Lord say to me, Vaughn? He said, the reason you're losing is because you have the wrong posture. You can't win backpedaling. Your strength is in this. This ain't you. You can't win like this, but like this, can't nobody beat you. I didn't give y'all my second point. Your posture has to be undeterred. Your perspective, Jeff, has to be undeniable. Uh, let, me, let me read the text so you get it. I, I gotta let you go. Listen, if you don't have a church, if you don't have a pastor, don't play with God. He's been, he's been talking to you for the last hour. He's been like, this is what I just saw. Like you had decay around your heart. God's been picking off the decay, breaking that hard stuff off of your heart, making your heart soft again so that you can be loved again. You don't have a pastor? Well, when you, when you said yes, put your clothes on, and drove over here that was your yes you woke up without a pastor when you walk when you got on this parking lot do me a favor look at your neighbor and say we go together now we go together now somebody walking come on this your church if you in the balcony walk this way walk this way you in the balcony walk this way walk this way Hey, did y'all know this ain't nobody trying to leave? I love my church. I love my church. Y'all help me praise God for those on the altar. Let's go. Listen. 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 Listen, do me a favor. Look at your neighbor and say, we go together now. We a thing now. Maybe you didn't come with any intention of joining a church, but you know God's been dealing with your heart. I get it. I, I, if I had it my way, I'd come back a few times and just make sure. But, but listen, you know when God is saying, now. You can sense that. Come on, mama. Those of you in the balcony over here, y'all walk around the front and come on. Those of you in the balcony over here, those, those three or four people, the fourth person may be your child, but there are three or four people like right over in here. Just come right down here. This is your church. This is your church. Welcome home, mama. Come on, we gotta go because it's, it's, it's 11, 19. I gotta get you out of here. Do me a favor real quick, real quick. Just on your left and on your right, I just want you to ask your neighbor, who's your pastor? They not gonna lie. They scared the lying church. Hey, 
Hey, can I tell you something? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Because I know some of y'all. Come on, they coming. I see you. Listen, if you in here with your friends, you better bring them to this altar. Don't let them leave disconnected. I see you, James. Let me, let me clarify something. We got another man of God coming. Come on, man of God. Yeah. That's another man of God right there. Welcome home, boy. Welcome home. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Let me. Somebody's walking out of the balcony. Come on. Come on, baby. Let me clarify something real quick. Let me, I, I, don't, I, I don't know why God has me using this analogy, but if, if we was going together and you didn't come home for like a year, we don't go together. Watch this. You got a key to the house, but when you get to the door, because somebody in here like, well, I, you know, I, I, you know, I, I had my, you know, my mom and them church back at home. You know, I, I was, I was just there for Easter. What is Holy Spirit saying to you right now? I gotta go. What I. These folks I'm waiting on, this, this, everything we did today was, was for this right now. Because you cannot leave this church disconnected. If you leave here, you're going to leave here defeated. You can't claim this. Everything you just heard me say, just, just throw it in the trash. Because it's only for people who are connected to the church of the Lord Jesus. Come on. I got to get you out of here for the sake of time. Somebody's walking out of the balcony. They coming. What, what did your neighbor say when you asked them? What'd they say? They said me? Okay, well, y'all got to get on y'all game then. I, I was, I was, I was going to talk about that because I, I'll talk about it next week, but Everything you love, you talk about. You know how I know what you love? It's on your timeline. Everything you care about, everything you're vested in, everything that's, that's good to you, it's on your timeline. I want, I, want you, I want you to make this commitment. I want you to make this commitment. Well, Bishop, where they going to sit? On the floor? I don't know. We're going to... We're going to put pressure on God to make somebody give us a bigger place to have church. Y'all know it's corporations with buildings they can't use after COVID, and they need a tax write-off. They could just give it to us. See, you see what I'm saying? Y'all y'all so passive-aggressive. Y'all like, we're going to wait on God to do it. No, we're going to go write them a letter and ask for it. Matter of fact, let's do this just as a, as a demonstration of our faith this week, Anaya. Let's ask Mayor Dickens to give us the Civic Center. Let's ask him to give us the Civic Center this week. You see how y'all like, ooh, no. I need y'all to praise God like he gonna give us what we asked for. Y'all like, God give us the Civic Center, we could get a whole lot more people saved. Yeah. All right, well, let's go. Is this it? This it? I know this not it, but I, I, it's, I gotta go. It's 1120. I gotta let y'all go. Y'all gonna be fighting on the parking lot. I gotta let you go. Uh, all right. Is your, is your, if, if, if your friend died tonight, are you sure they go to heaven? If not, Grab their phone and walk up to this altar. They're going to follow their phone. Just grab their phone. Walk up. Walk to this altar. 
Okay, that's it. Can we, can we, can we, well, let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a good number. Can we thank God for these, for these eight new family members? That's, eight is the number of new beginnings. And listen, those of you who are in the online sanctuary and you know this is your church, you know I'm your pastor, I want you to grab your phone. You're going to text 54244. Somebody else is coming. You're going to text 54244. You're going to text the word DR Salvation. Click the link. Fill it out in its entirety. Let me be the first to say welcome home. Somebody say welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. Pastor D, somebody coming. All right, I'm going. Somebody's coming. Uh, listen, what are we doing Tuesday night? We're going to be in the online sanctuary Tuesday night. We're going to be in the on. Hey, are y'all are really... Are y'all really in church on Tuesday night? Are y'all really in church on Tuesday night? Or are you watching like Thursday night? Are you in place on Tuesday night? Okay, I'll meet y'all Tuesday night in the online sanctuary. It's going to be amazing. Uh, Pastor D's going to lead us from this point. I just want to speak a blessing over you. Uh, I decree and declare. There it is. Throw your hands up and receive this. Uncommon favor all week this week. to the choir stand. We'll get more pertinent information from you. May the Lord bless and keep you until we meet again. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. We love you. family. 